So we got some stuff to talk about. There is a lot of talk out there about how great HELOCs are, and we've discussed that on this channel, but there's also a lot of talk out there saying how bad and dangerous HELOCs are. So are HELOCs bad? Well, they could be, especially if you don't sit back and watch this video. Let's get into it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you didn't already know, my name's Jay Costa. I'm a real estate agent, investor, and builder here in northern New Jersey. And if you get value out of this video, please hit that like button down below. It truly helps me grow the channel. And also consider subscribing because we are slowly building a tight-knit community here of like-minded individuals looking to build wealth in real estate. And a lot of times, we specifically talk about using a HELOC to build wealth in real estate. Now, HELOCs can be great tools in order to build wealth and gain access to capital that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. But they also have some major risks involved that you need to be aware of, and they're certainly not for everybody. And in this video, I'm gonna go over what the risks and the bad parts of a HELOC are that you need to be aware of before obtaining and signing up for one, especially in this higher interest environment that we're finding ourselves in currently. And at the end of the video, I'll also share with you my three rules that you need to go by in order to decide whether a HELOC is right or wrong for you and your situation. So first things first, why are HELOCs bad? Well, they're not bad, but there are bad parts of them and you can't go down a bad path if you mismanage it. And you see, that brings us to our main problem with a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. It's basically a big fat credit card attached to the equity of your home. And it doesn't take much to realize how that could be easily mishandled and mismanaged if you're not smart, especially during tough times like we're finding ourselves in right now. And you have to be aware that if you mismanage these funds, it's not free money and you're attaching debt, additional debt, to the house that you and your family live in. Let that settle in. Now, the second biggest problem with a HELOC, as far as I'm concerned, is the variable interest rate that it has. Unlike a conventional mortgage, a HELOC is set to the prime rate, which is set by the Fed, and can fluctuate, as we know, based on the market and the market trends and the economic environment that we're in. And you have no control over that. A HELOC, in my opinion, is meant to be a short-term debt tool, not, nothing long-term. And the reason for that is because the longer you hold a balance on your HELOC, the more susceptible you are to that variable interest rate skyrocketing to a point where you can't afford the payments. The third reason why I would say HELOCs may be bad for certain situations anyway, are that they are what's called a callable loan. This means that the bank or lender that you got the HELOC from is allowed to call back that balance, either a part of it or all of it, at any time for any reason. Now, the most commonly used situation where they may call back a loan is obviously if you're not making your minimum payments, but they could also call back a loan in, let's say, a situation where the housing prices are going down. This obviously brings us back to 2008 when the housing prices were plummeting and a lot of home equity line of credit lenders were calling back the balances on the equity that people thought they had in their home and they just didn't have it anymore, leading to a wave of foreclosures. And frankly, you can't blame the lender because the money that they're giving you with a HELOC is based on the value of your home. And if the value of that asset, your home, is going down substantially, they wanna protect themselves as well, right? So you really can't blame them that once prices start going down, they may consider taking that money and calling that money back from you to be paid. Another reason why a HELOC may be bad for your situation is that it's not always an interest only loan. Now, the first 10 years of a HELOC are what's called a draw period, and that's when you only have to pay interest only payments. But after that 10 years is up, it turns into a repayment period where you'll have to pay back principal and interest on an amortized schedule. And obviously that payment will be much higher than it was when it was an interest only payment. I did make a video about this in the past. I'll put a link in the description box down below, as well as up here, where I explain the difference between a draw period and the repayment period on a home equity line of credit. Now, the fifth reason why I'd say HELOCs may be bad is that they are not made to be a debt consolidation tool. And this is one of the biggest questions that I get from you guys is whether it's a good idea or not a good idea to take out a HELOC in order to consolidate 
uh, consumer debt, credit card debt, as well as student loan debt. And almost always my answer is going to be no. I made a video about this one as well. I'll put a link in the, in the uh, description box as well as up in the corner right now. But I say no, not because you're not going to save money, because technically, of course, you will. If you're taking a balance from a that you're paying 20% interest rate on a credit card, and you take that balance and you put it into a HELOC paying 9% or whatever, of course you're saving money. That seems like the smart thing to do. But the issue is not the interest rate. The issue, in my opinion, if you got yourself into that situation to begin with, is your budgeting and your spending. And chances are, if you got yourself into that situation in the first place, once that credit card balance goes to zero and you transfer that balance into a home equity line of credit where you're making interest-only payments, you are very likely to just rack up the credit card debt yet again, all while just continuing to make those interest-only payments with no real plan to pay off the actual HELOC balance. Then eventually your HELOC may go to the repayment period where your payment will be much higher than before, or even worse, we find ourselves in an environment where home prices are going down substantially and you get the loan called back on you and you don't have the way to pay it back. And you could see how this goes very, very quickly in a bad direction. The sixth reason why HELOCs are bad are things like inactivity fees as well as closing costs. You see most HELOC lenders, if you don't use it at all, you're still paying an inactivity fee for it not being used. Now, that could be avoided pretty easily by just taking a little bit out and paying it back right away. But a lot of HELOC lenders also have closing costs when you go close on the loan, and that can add up in certain situations. Usually it's not too bad. It's not anything like closing on a mortgage, but just keep an eye on the fine print because each lender is going to be different. Reason number seven that a HELOC is bad for certain situations is that it's hard to get a HELOC on an investment property. It's pretty easy, albeit not as easy as a year or so ago, to get a HELOC on your primary residence. But what about an investment property? While they are still out there offered by some lenders, most lenders have stopped giving HELOCs on investment properties. Unless you can find one of these few lenders that is still doing investment property HELOCs, you're putting your own primary residence, like I said, where you and your family reside, on the line in your investment endeavors. And you could lose that home if things go bad. And lastly, and this is kind of connected, HELOCs are not good to use in order to buy investment properties. Let me explain. Since the HELOC has a variable interest rate, they're not really made for long-term investments. And the number one long-term investment is a long-term buy and hold rental property. Now, for short-term investment properties, I do think that a HELOC is a good option for you something like a fix and flip or something like that. Or uh, if you're using the Burr method, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat, where basically you're using the HELOC either to acquire the property or to use it to rehab the property, and then you have a cash out refinance at the end that you'll be able to pay off the HELOC completely with. If you're looking to use a HELOC for a long-term investment, there are other alternatives. Things like obviously a cash out refi, a home equity loan, as well as a hard money loan or a DSCR loan. I've actually covered all of these things in the past. I'll put a link to all of them in the description box. Definitely check them out. I'll list them out individually so you can find what you're looking for. Now, in conclusion, a HELOC is still a great wealth building tool that you could use to access capital in order to acquire assets like real estate that you wouldn't be able to uh, acquire otherwise. But as I stated before, it's not for everybody and not for every situation. So if you're still on the fence about deciding whether or not a HELOC is right or wrong for you, let me give you my three rules for using your HELOC to invest. Number one, it must be short term. As I stated before, since you have a variable interest rate, the longer you hold a balance, the more susceptible and at risk you are that your payments will go up substantially while you hold that balance. So that means don't use it on a down payment on an investment property that you have no way to pay it back. My number two rule for HELOC investing is that you must have a clear exit strategy in place. Do not take money out of your HELOC using the equity of your home unless you have an actual plan to pay it off within probably a year or so. I wouldn't go any longer than a year and a half. And lastly, number three, my number three rule for using a HELOC to invest is never, never, never bite off more than you can chew. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, don't take money out of your HELOC if you don't have it liquid somewhere else that you can use to pay it back in a worst case scenario. Now, I've had some of you guys ask me in the comments, well, if I had the money somewhere else, why would I even need a HELOC? Well, the answer is very simple. 
a lot of you out there have money in the stock market, in retirement accounts, whatever. I, just me personally, maybe I'm a little more conservative. I would not take money out of a HELOC unless I had money to pay it back in a different account or location or asset that I could liquidate and use to pay off. Now, obviously this is going to depend on your situation and your risk tolerance, right? Me, as a married man with two children and a house that we all live in, I may be much more risk averse to someone who is just getting started and is single with no family. You may want to maybe take that risk, but not me. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comment section what you've been using your HELOC for, and also let me know about your good stories with a HELOC as well as your bad stories with a HELOC. Is a HELOC an overall good tool to build wealth? Or is it just a way for people and homeowners to use their home as an ATM machine? And let me know if you think I'm being too conservative because I have had some of you guys say that in the comment section. I love that comment section down there, by the way. I love getting back to as many of you as possible, and I love the feedback that I'm getting. So if you have any feedback as well, we're almost at the end of the year here on the content that I am putting out. If you want more videos, different topics, let me know, and I will see you next time.